So this is my tutorial, um, which is a typography photograph tutorial. And as you can see here, this is my example of using typography um, and Photoshop alongside a photo to create an interesting effect. And this is my picture of um, London Bridge in London. So I'm just going to hide away these um, layers get rid of them so I'm starting from scratch like you. you're going to need to have an image open you're also going to need to have some text ready and I've just put mine in a well, word document I've just copied and pasted that information from the internet for quickness and um, the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to um, split your um, image up into colors um, different color ranges so go to select color range um, click on shadows make sure it says selection at the top click OK, command C to copy, command V to paste and that will paste into a new layer and do the same thing again, select colour range this time you want to choose the midtones and click OK, control C, control V or, um, command or control sorry uh, and then you have those two layers the shadows and the midtones separately and then you're going to select um, both of those layers by holding down shift and then doing command E and that will join the two layers together. So this is the stage that you're at. Um, you don't need the background layer anymore so you can keep that hidden with the eye turned off. You then need to create a new document for your text um, and you want your document to be 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch like that so you've got a nice square you're going to select the text tool and then draw out by holding down on the click um, and dragging out to make a square shape ready to put your text into then open up your document that has your text ready um, command C to copy and then command V to paste in and you'll see that actually I've already chosen my font to be Edwardian script. I think this works quite well. Uh, with, and a font size of 30 is also quite a good size. So if you then we need to turn this text into a brush. So we're going to edit this as a brush. Um, edit this as a brush. So edit, define brush preset, give it a name. I'm just going to call my London for now. Once you say that, that should then be ready to use within your other document. You won't need that one anymore, so you can get rid of it. What you need to do then is to open up your brushes. So select your brush tool, create a new layer like so, and then select your brush that you've just made. Um, we don't want it to be too big. We want it perhaps to start off around the sort of 300 mark and the idea with this is kind of just to give lots of different um, sizes of text uh, make sure that you're on black and then you basically just need to oops I need to check the opacity is on 100% you just need to then kind of like feel over the image um, so once you've done that on 300 you can then go a bit bigger to maybe start for like six or seven hundred um, put a couple of those around and then let's go even bigger um, and the idea of that is just to play around keep playing around until you've got a good selection if you want to hide your image while you're doing this so you can see what's going on you can try and do that as well um, there you go so once you've done that and you've got a good select, um, selection of text sizes, an area of text there, um, the next thing that you need to do is actually to create a layer mask. And you do that by clicking on the third icon along on the bottom. Click on that. Make sure you're on your text layer. And you'll see that this little new section comes onto your layer, which is your layer mask area. Um, hide that for the moment, click back onto your layer 1 um, with your midtones and shadows on 
You then want to do Command A to select all on that, and then Command C to copy. Show your text layer again. Click on the layer mask thumbnail there. Hold down Alt and click, and that will bring the actual layer mask up for you. And then you want to press Command V to paste your selection in. So now that you've done that, you need to hit Command D um, to dese uh, deselect and Command I to invert your image. Um, hide this one here, click on your actual image and there you can see that you're starting to get the effect building up that we were setting up earlier on. What would be good at this stage if you created a white layer underneath, so create a new layer, drag it down so that it's underneath the top um, the text layer, make sure it's white uh, and fill it with the paint bucket and that helps you to be able to see what's going on a bit clearer. The next thing that you're going to do is um, edit this because we want this to be coloured, the text layer. If you go into the layer blending options here where you'll find the layer blending style, um, layer styles, open up the gradient box uh, and you can click on screen for the blending mode and then choose your gradient. It's up to you which one you do but for now I'm just going to go with this one quite standard. Um, type of gradient but obviously there's lots of different ones for you to play around with and then um, you can actually change the scale of it to make it a bit bigger I'm going to make it a bit darker I think and then you can also change the angle which I'm going to put slightly let's have a look and see what's going on yep yeah. I'm going to put it maybe slightly like that so it's a bit yellowy over on one corner in the lighter area perhaps and then click OK. Right, we're nearly there now with this tutorial. The next thing that we need to do is we need to kind of um, brush away some of the areas so we need to make sure that this is on black first of all. Make sure it's always on black. Click on your brush, choose a nice soft brush around about sort of 30 points or so. You then need to make sure that your opacity is also down about 30 we don't want to be rubbing away too much of our lovely text layer um, and then literally you need to just paintbrush over your area and what that does is it um, gets rid of some of the excess white and that helps for your image to kind of show up a bit more to add a bit more detail in and obviously you don't want all of it showing but this just helps to kind of pick out some of those key areas that are missing like the tops of the bridge and things like that where you want the detail to really be obvious. So just have a little play around doing that until you're ready. And then once you've done that, final stage just to add a little bit more detail if you want. Um, if you're not happy with this um, white area being completely white or you wanted to add some more text in, if you actually click into your, um, if you alt and click into the layer mask layer here and then open up your brush again, you can add a few more layers in. So if you wanted to add in another really big um, layer with some writing in, you could try doing that and if you click back you can actually see that that's now added that in. Um, probably what I'm going to do is actually add in, alt click and just add in some more small text, well, maybe the 300 mark and I'm keeping it on a quite low opacity so I don't want this to be really over the top, I just want it to kind of help blending in. So that the white background isn't completely white so that's just added a bit of a layer in there um, and then really it's up to you just to fiddle around and finish off your portrait and have it however you want it um, and just maybe you can still add in a bit more text if you felt like it um, back in the normal layer 
that's what you wanted to do. And then when you think you're ready, then you can kind of leave the portrait like that, the image is that. So that is how to make a typography photograph in Adobe Photoshop and hopefully you found that helpful.